Hi, in this video I'm going to be making installing the covers for the uh, stepper motors for my mini mill. Uh, flood coolant is all done, uh, but I got to cover the motors. Alright. Okay, so what I'm using for this little project is uh, Lexan. I'm using uh, 8 by 10 sheets of Lexan, thin Lexan. I made one of these already. Uh, I probably got a little too hot in some areas and it's kind of started melting there, but it's the basic shape that I need uh, to cover it. It's got a little lip on there. Uh, of course, uh, so two of those, um, a heat gun. I happen to have a Milwaukee because I'm an electrician, so also so. Uh, but you can get a heat gun at Harbor Freight, pretty inexpensive. Um, the other thing I'm using is uh, two by fours. Uh, for this one, I actually just put this on here and put a clamp on that. Uh, that works fine for for covering this motor over here, but it doesn't actually fit over this mount from CNC Fusion, which is pretty popular. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to... I have a piece of uh, four inch aluminum. Uh, that'll be a good size. So I'm just going to add this to here and I'm going to peel off the Lexan plastic here. And I'm going to measure this out, make sure it's on the center, and get that all clamped down, and put this on here, and then come back. Alright. Okay, I decided to put uh, a piece of, uh, another piece of 4 inch uh, aluminum on top of this, so when I do my uh, fold over my edge here, it works out. I've, I've got a little bit of a lip, maybe a quarter of an inch to be able to bend over. And I've got it all clamped down. I just have it screwed down to the bench over here. So, uh, just also, I actually got this method of this idea to do it this way from Haas. Uh, if anybody hasn't seen his uh, channel, you should go check it out. But I uh, thought I'd uh, give him a shout out for his idea on this. So, um, all right, I'm just going to turn on the gun here and start heating it up. Okay, well what I noticed is that if you do it on the, the high setting, oops, these usually have a, a high and a low and a medium low setting. Um, if I did using the high setting, it was really easy to, to discolor it, uh, to start melting it like this. Um, but if I did it on the low setting, I didn't have that trouble. It came out pretty clear. You can see. But the other thing is, is it didn't actually didn't actually bend exactly where I wanted it to. 
but I, that's not really all that critical for what I'm doing. I mean, so I'll probably just go with that. I'll do that on the other side and uh, I'll be back. Okay, well I finished this one. Uh, as you could tell, the uh, the low setting uh, on it actually comes out looking a lot nicer. Actually, this side looks a little nicer than this side, but um, it takes longer, obviously, on the lower setting. Um, but I think it's definitely worth it. In fact, I think I'm gonna remake this one uh, on the low setting, so I don't have that this right here. So. I'm gonna go ahead and remake that. Actually, I'm gonna do the get set up and do the uh, the drip edge on this one, and then I'll remake that other one. Okay, well, I'm not really sure the best way to make this drip edge, so I'm just kind of winging it here. But um, I think Haas just uh, heated it up and kind of bent it over. Uh, but when you do that, the the corners. You got to kind of melt the corner and pull this in too also, but uh, I don't know, I'll do my best here. Okay, well, it doesn't seem to be any real easy way that, that I see to, to do this uh, front drip edge on the corner. I don't know, mine must be easier to uh, cut another piece and stick it in there and hot glue it in or something, I don't know, but um, I think it'll work the way it is, just not the, uh, the prettiest thing in the world, but it uh, should be okay. All right. Okay, I got both covers made. I'm just gonna uh, drill and tap and attach these on here with screws. All right. Okay, I got the first cover attached here. I actually brought it all the way up to the uh, the tooling plate, um, so it covers further up there. Uh, I'll see how that works out. Uh, I didn't actually have any regular screws. So I ended up using electrical ground screws for now, but. Uh, all right, now I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, the front one here. Okay, well I decided to actually put this this one actually under this uh, this uh, rubber guard here. Uh, just going to uh, drill holes in this and put it right under that screw, so that way when the water comes off here, it'll just it won't be able. To, if you put it out here, that might sneak under here and roll under. I could put silicone on there, but that would make it really hard to. Uh, remove later, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put it all the way up there. Looks like I'm gonna have to notch this or something because it's uh, a little too deep here for this cord. So, all right. okay, well I got that installed under there, just using the screws for uh, for this here, and uh, so that's mounted. That's mounted. I uh, cut a little notch in the side of the plastic here for that to go through and I think that's about it I think I'm ready to uh, turn it on I think my cord fell down though one of my next projects is going to be tying the uh, 
tying the flood coolant in, tying the flood coolant in to a Mach 3 into the control box. So, all right, let me uh, turn the water on here and see what happens. Okay, well it seems to be okay with this motor here. Even if I shoot it out this way. But it looks like some of the water is trying to seep underneath uh, this part right here. So, I'm gonna have to figure out what to do with that. Um, I don't know, I guess maybe I might end up moving it back out so the edge here is even with here. And then just, uh, I don't know, putting some silicone underneath it or something. I'm going to give that a try and see if that works. Alright. Uh, everything seems to be draining okay. Uh, so... Uh, of course, I do have this ridge right here. Uh, what ended up happening is I got some kind of uh, air bubble or something underneath here. So I still gotta figure out what I'm gonna do about that. But uh... all right, let me uh, let's see what I can... let me change this. Okay, well I got this cover moved out here. I didn't put silicone under there. I just wanted to see how it was doing. Uh, if I put silicone on there, then it's going to be really hard to take this on and off. So, I don't know. I might figure out some kind of gasket to stick in there. Um, uh, right now, it seems to be... doesn't seem to be any water getting under there. But, uh, of course, this seems to be... This is working perfect right here, this one. Under there, under these, uh, this cover here, it's working really good. Um... What I did do is I uh, drilled a hole in the side of this to be able to drain this out. Of course, the flow of the water coming through here is greater than the how much water can come out of here. But um, anyway, it seems to be working pretty good. The uh, if you can see under there, doesn't seem to be getting any water on that switch there. Uh, I'm actually going to be changing the switches. So I'm not going to go into detail on that. Um, this one over here uh, gets water on it from time to time, uh, but I don't like really like the way that set it. the switches are too big. Uh, so I decided to go with uh, something different on that. Okay, here it is. Now this is actually a, a switch similar to the ones that they use on the uh, the Tormach. Um, so and it comes with a little boot here that you can stick it in, or actually I, that was an extra, I, I uh, bought the boot to go with it. It's not waterproof, it's dust proof, but you know it should help some on there. Um, this, I don't know, this will probably mount over here somehow. Um, but I'm still going to have to protect it from the water. Um, this one will just go in place with this right here. I was having problems with some of these arms bending. I mean, I could have gotten better, mi smaller micro switches with a smaller arm, and it would, probably would have been okay, but since I was changing, I decided to go with this style where there's no possibility of any bend in the arm at all, so. All right, but uh, that will be on another video. Um, all right, I guess that's it for the covers. All right. Oh, by the way, these switches uh, I actually got from Granger's, Granger's Industrial Supply. Uh, I believe this one was about 20 bucks, uh, not cheap, but uh, and I think the little booties were, uh, little covers were like four or five dollars, so.
If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below, and please subscribe. Alright, bye.